Welcome. In this video, we look at section 2.4, the monotone convergence theorem, and a first look at infinite series. Uh, we have the monotone convergence theorem, which is a test to see if a sequence converges. We'll see what does it mean for a series to converge when I add together a whole bunch of terms. And then the Cauchy condensation test. So this is a nice test to see if a series converges. All right, let's begin. The monotone convergence theorem. So here's our definition. A sequence A is increasing if the nth term is less than or equal to the n plus first term for all n that are natural numbers. All right. now, it doesn't have to be strictly increasing. This, is, this isn't a strict inequality, but just as long as it's, uh, the terms are greater than or equal to the one before, then it's increasing. Similarly, a sequence is decreasing if its terms get smaller and smaller, and again with a weak inequality. More in general, we say that a sequence is monotone, if it's either increasing or decreasing. Now recall, if a sequence converges, then it's bounded. But the converse doesn't have to be true. You can have something that's bounded, but just bounces all over the place and never actually converges. However, if the sequence is more orderly than just bouncing around, we have the monotone convergence theorem. If a sequence is monotone and bounded, then it converges. And maybe this seems reasonable. If I have a sequence whose terms are increasing, 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 and it's actually bounded by some number, then it's sort of being forced to uh, get very, very close to some limit. So it, it seems reasonable, the monotone convergence theorem. Now, the MCT asserts convergence without explicit mention of a limit. That's what makes it a nice theorem. I don't have to know what the limit is beforehand in order to assert that the sequence actually converges. So that's nice. Here's our proof of the monotone convergence theorem. It really isn't bad. So, and maybe the picture kind of gives it away. I have a sequence, uh, and imagine that this sequence is increasing, 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 increasing. If I take the terms of that sequence and think of them as a set, well, the set is bounded, so by the axiom of completeness, there is a supremum. And it turns out that supremum is a good choice to think about maybe what the limit of this sequence is. And it turns out it is. If I take that supremum, I go left and right by epsilon. There eventually comes a point where the sequence enters within that epsilon neighborhood and never escapes. All right, let's see the details. Suppose... My sequence of A's is increasing and bounded. Then I'm going to make a set, the set of terms in the sequence. Now, that set is bounded above, so let S be the supremum. And the claim is that the sequence converges to S. All right, here's my proof of convergence. Let epsilon greater than zero be given. Now, since S is the supremum, there really is some element of my sequence where if I, if I back away from that supremum just a little bit, so here we see in the picture, if I go just to the left of the supremum just a little bit, well, there has to be some element of my set, some term of the sequence that's uh, greater than S minus epsilon. Now, since my sequence is increasing, then subsequent terms will be even greater. So I have subsequent terms of my sequence. I'm sorry, I'm assuming little n greater than or equal to big N. Subsequent terms of my sequence will be greater than or equal to the a sub big N. And so consequently, subsequent terms of my sequence will be greater than s minus epsilon. Now, on the other hand, subsequent terms of my sequence are still all less than or equal to the least upper bound. And the least upper bound, s, is, of course, less strictly less than s plus epsilon. So look what we have here. My nth term of the sequence is within epsilon of s. And another, another way of saying that is that the absolute value, a sub n minus s, is less than epsilon. And that's exactly what we need for a proof of convergence. So I let epsilon greater than zero be given. I show there exists a big N so that for all little n greater than or equal to that big N, it has to be the case that a sub little n is within epsilon of S. 
Let's talk about series. Here's our definition. Let b sub n be a sequence. An infinite series is a formal expression of the form uh, this guy right here. So what does formal expression mean? Formal expression means we're, we're just going to write it down without really caring what it means, and we'll try to attach meaning to it later. So I'll, I'll just write this thing down so I can refer to it. Now let's try to think about what it means. How do I make sense of that? We define the corresponding sequence of partial sums by this way. So the this term of the sequence, s sub m, is the sum of the first m terms of the series. So for example, s sub 1 is just b1. s sub 2 is uh, b1 plus b2. s sub 3 is b1 plus b2 plus b3. And what I've done is I've converted my question about what is going on with this series. I've converted that question into a question about a sequence, this sequence of partial sums. And this is what we really do. We, we take the series and we translate it into a sequence of partial sums. And then I use what I know about sequences to give me information about the series. So for example, we say that the series converges to some limit capital B if the sequence of partial sums converges to that limit capital B. So in this case, we write the series equals capital B. And we're actually defining equality in this case. It's not like we're discovering it. We're defining what this formal expression really means. It means, literally, here we go, if and only if, that this sequence of partial sums converges to B. That's what equality in a series means. Here's an example. Let's consider this sequence 1 over uh, n squared, as n goes from 1 to infinity. So this looks like 1 plus 1 fourth plus 1 ninth plus 1 sixteenth, and the series itself has a sum that goes on forever and ever and ever. But to get a handle on it, let's define the mth partial sum that goes 1 plus 1 over 2 squared, 1 over 3 squared, 1 over 4 squared, and it adds all the way up through 1 over m squared. The terms are getting smaller, right? 1 fourth, and I go to 1 ninth. 1 ninth is smaller than 1 fourth. 1 sixteenth is smaller. So the, the, the terms themselves get smaller and smaller and smaller. But it's important to notice that the partial sums are increasing. So it's important to keep that, that distinction. The terms of, of the sum, the terms are getting smaller, but the partial sums are getting larger. And the partial sums are getting larger because every term is positive. So here's our goal. Let's find an upper bound on these partial sums. If I can show that there's an upper bound on the partial sums, then I'll know that the series converges. And it's okay. So here's our, it's, it's kind of a neat little trick. Let's take a look at this. The, the mth partial sum uh, can be expressed this way, like 2 squared, 3 squared, 4 squared, all the way up to m squared. And that is less than something else. I'll take that second 2 and turn it into a 1. I'll take the 3 and turn it into a 2. I take the 4 and turn it into a 3. And by making my denominator smaller, I'm increasing the size of the sum. So this sum that I have on the bottom is a little bit bigger. And again, it's just kind of a trick. Somebody came up with this a long time ago. <laughs> Look at that term right there. That's one half. And you know, one half is the same thing as one minus a half. And one sixth, well, that's the same thing as one half minus a third. One twelfth, that's a third minus a fourth. And so on. And look at this. What do you see? I actually have a telescoping sum. I have a negative one half, positive one half. Negative one third, positive one third. Negative one fourth, positive one fourth. On and on and on. What remains? All of the all of those inside terms fall away. And I'm only left with one plus one minus one over m. So this so this looks like two minus just a little bit. So that mth partial sum is less than two. 2 is the upper bound, or 2 is an upper bound. And so this sequence converges 
to some unknown limit less than 2. I have my, the, my partial sums form an increasing sequence. They are monotone, and they are bounded above by 2. Therefore, monotone convergence theorem, this sequence of partial sums converges, and so the series converges. Now, just to be clear, what it actually converges to, that's an entirely different question altogether, and there's a lot of interesting history surrounding that problem. Let's talk about the harmonic series. So this is similar, uh, just 1 over n in this case. So this series looks like 1 plus 1 half plus a third plus a fourth plus a fifth, on and on and on forever and ever and ever, but I can make a sequence of partial sums where I go through the mth term. So I'd like to know, is this sequence bounded, this sequence of partial sums? So S2, there we go, I'll just identify S2, there we go, S2 is 1 plus 1 half. Okay, that looks good. Now consider S4. So for S4, I can uh, take my 1, I'll do a half there, and here's a little trick I'll do. I'll gather together the next two terms. The one-third plus the one-fourth ends up being greater than one-fourth plus one-fourth, which is a half. So my uh, S4 is uh, greater than one plus a half plus a half. What if I go to S sub 8, the eighth partial sum? Well, now I'll gather together the next four terms, and look at this. This one-fifth, one-sixth, one-seventh, I'm going to replace all of those with one-eighth. So, so what I actually have written there, typed, that is bigger than one-eighth plus one-eighth plus one-eighth plus one-eighth. And those eighths together make one-half. Oh, look, I've just created another half. So, in fact, my S sub 8 is greater than 1 plus a half plus a half plus a half. 1 plus 3 halves. And what if I go out the next 8 terms? Okay, the, the next 8 terms are going to start with 1 ninth all the way up through 1 sixteenth. But I can replace those all with 1 sixteenths to get something a little bit bigger. And those are eight terms, so that's another one half. And so my sixteenth partial sum is greater than one plus four halves. And you can see this pattern goes on and on and on. In fact, what does it look like in general? My subscript, two, four, eight, sixteen, my subscript is a power of two. So I'll write it as S sub two K. And that power of two is what is the coefficient out in front of the one half? So that uh, two is two to the one, and I have one appearance of the half. Four is two squared, and so I have two halves. Uh, eight is two cubed, so I have three halves. Sixteen is two to the fourth, and I have four halves. And in general, uh, the two to the kth partial sum is greater than one plus k halves. These terms of my partial sums, they're getting bigger and bigger and bigger. This k will continue to grow. It will continue to grow as large as I want. So given any big number, as big as I want, I can find some partial sum that's bigger than that. So in fact, the harmonic series diverges. The sequence of partial sums has no upper limit. It just keeps growing and growing and growing. And so too does this harmonic series. It diverges, grows without bound. The Cauchy condensation test. This is another result of the monotone convergence theorem. This is kind of a cool idea. Suppose I have a sequence, uh, a sequence of Bs that's decreasing, and all of my Bs are greater than or equal to zero for all natural numbers. So we've already seen sequences like this, right? You know, when I looked at my harmonic series, uh, I'm adding terms like one over n. Those terms are decreasing, but all positive. And when I looked at uh, the sum of the reciprocals of the squares, 1 over n squared, those terms were all positive and decreasing. So this is just kind of a general situation. I have a, a, a sequence where the terms are decreasing, and they're all positive, at least non-negative. Then the series of those terms, adding together all the bn's, that series converges if and only if 
this weird series converges. Do you see what that is? So here it is. I'll write it out a little bit more. This is my normal series, so b1 plus b2 plus b3 plus b4, on and on and on. But this guy, well, it's it's b1 plus twice b2 plus four times b4, eight times b8, 16 times b sub 16. It's kind of weird. And this is where the, the word condensation comes in. It's like I'm taking the terms of my original sequence and I'm condensing them together. I only am looking at like the second term and the fourth term and the eighth term and the sixteenth term. And curiously, the convergence or divergence of my original series is exactly dependent on the convergence or divergence of this condensed series. The, uh, the terms 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, they carry all the information that I need to determine whether or not my original series uh, converges or diverges. So one little note here, note the lower limit of summation in this uh, condensed series. It starts with zero, uh, which is a little bit unusual. We usually start our series with one, but it does it just so I can be sure that I'm starting with my b sub one. Let's prove the Cauchy condensation test. Now, the forward direction is homework. And it's very similar to the proof that the harmonic series diverges. So go back and take a look at that proof as you try the homework problem. But right here now in this video, let's do the converse. So we'll show the leftward implication. If the condensed series converges, then the original series converges. We're given, recall, that our sequence of b's is decreasing and all the b's are greater than or equal to zero. And I'm also uh, given that uh, my condensed series converges, and I want to show that the original series, the regular series, converges. Now, before we go too far, let's just think about our strategy. The partial sums, I know that the partial sums of my condensed series converges. Oh, wait, the series converges, so the, the sequence of partial sums converges. And then what I'd like to show is that the sequence of partial sums of my uh, regular series converges, and that will tell me that the series converges. So I'm going to uh, convert things into statements about partial sums. So what does a partial sum of the condensed series look like? Well, it begins b1, and then 2b2, and then 4b4, 8b8. And again, those subscripts are powers of 2, so eventually I'll go out to sum 2 to the k. That would be the kth term in my partial sum. Now, the sequence of partial sums is bounded. Why is that? Can you pause the video and, and answer that for yourself? Why is that sequence of partial sums bounded? Well, it's bounded because I know that the series converges. And so I actually know that the sequence of partial sums converges. And so since the sequence of partial sums converges, it must be bounded. Okay, another way of saying that, there exists some big M such that every partial sum is less than M. Right, there's some big number M so that every partial sum is less than M. Now, this, this upper bound M, my goal is really to show that M is also an upper bound for uh, my partial sums for the, uh, the normal series. Well, let's look at the partial sums of the regular series. So uh, that's just b1 plus b2 plus b3, on and on and up, up to some point, and we'll call that s sub m. So my s with a subscript, those are the partial sums of my regular sequence, and t with a subscript, those are the partial sums of my condensed series. Now this sequence of s's, the partial sums of my regular series, that's increasing, right? It's increasing because all of my terms are positive, or at least non-negative. So uh, s sub m, that sequence is increasing. We'll in fact show that it's bounded by m, that same m that acts as an upper bound for the partial sums of the condensed series. So here's the idea. Let a little m be given. So little m is going to represent some subscript in my uh, partial sum of the regular sequence. So let's choose a k, 
so that m is less than or equal to uh, this expression on the right. So I can choose a k that eventually makes that right side bigger than or equal to m, certainly. So OK, so I'm given an m, and I can choose a k that makes this inequality true. Well, this is really a comparison of subscripts. m is less than or equal to that expression, so s sub m is less than or equal to that expression. And again, the idea is, you know, and this, and the idea is because this sequence of partial sums is increasing. Okay, well, let's analyze that guy. So it's really just b1 plus b2 plus b3 plus b4, on and on and on and on, all the way up to this this crazy subscript two to the k plus one minus one. But the reason why we chose that crazy number, that crazy subscript, is because now I can group things nicely. I, the, I leave the first term alone. I gather together the next two. I gather together the next four. I'll gather together the next eight. I'll gather together the, the next 16. And then this guy, how many terms are there? In fact, if you think about it a little bit, that's two to the k terms there. So if I replace my b3 with b2, then I get something a little bit bigger, right? Because the sequence is decreasing, you know, the bn's are decreasing. And so by replacing b3 with b2, I get something maybe a little bit bigger. And look at this, in the next uh, gathered together section, if I take 5, 6, and 7 and replace them with 4, 4, and 4, also I get something a little bit bigger. And I do this on and on and on. And then all the way to the end, if I take all those terms and replace them all with b sub 2 to the k, I get something a little bit bigger. But now that I've made all, all my gathered together parts the same, I can group them and give them coefficients. And so we find this is really b1, that's twice b2, that's 4 times b4, da 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 da, 2 to the k times b sub 2 to the k. And look at that, I have my condensed series. Well, I actually have a partial sum of my condensed series. This is my t sub k, right? So in fact, that's my t sub k, and I know that my t sub k is bounded. t sub k has to be less than m. So what have I really shown? My mth partial sum of the regular series is less than m. So the terms of my, uh, the terms of the partial sums of my regular series are bounded above. That is it. The sequence of partial sums of the regular series is bounded, thus that sequence converges, thus the series also converges. We'll end with a cool result. So this is a consequence of the Cauchy condensation test and the monotone convergence theorem. I'll not prove this, but I just want to bring it up and talk about it. The series 1 over n to the p is discussed a lot in mathematics. So um, we saw already a couple examples of this. The uh, harmonic series, that is the sum of uh, the reciprocals of the natural numbers, and uh, this sum 1 over n squared. Well, it turns out that series of that form converge if and only if that exponent on n is greater than 1, strictly greater than 1. The exponent for the harmonic series, the exponent is exactly 1, and so this guy actually diverges. But the series that sums 1 over n squared, that converges, as does all these other guys. So if I add together all the reciprocals of the cubes, that will converge. Or if I add together all the reciprocals of the fourth powers, that will converge. And these ones later on should make sense because uh, these higher powers, that denominator gets very big very quickly. And so uh, the terms I add get very small very quickly. And so certainly if 1 over n squared converges, all of those other things will converge too. But look at this, there, there is some middle ground that I've left open. Consider, for example, if I add together the summation n equals 1 to infinity of something like 1 over n raised to the 1.001. What's happening with that series? Well, there's hardly any difference between this series and the harmonic series, right? But this power on n is 
just a little bit more than one. And so these, uh, these denominators grow just, just barely a little bit faster than one over n. And what does our theorem say? Oh, this guy converges too. And so there's this knife edge dividing point between the series that diverge and the series that converge. And so we, in fact, sometimes we say that in a sense that the harmonic series is the slowest growing divergent series. If those denominators are any bigger at all, then it'll converge. You'll prove this later on in exercise 2.7. All right, and that finishes this section. We've seen some nice results about uh, convergence. The monotone convergence theorem, and we, we were able to talk about uh, series, and we talk about what it means for a series to converge. We look at the sequence of partial sums, and then this kind of cool idea of the Cauchy condensation test. I'll stop there.